what they're doing is, the, all Unitarians are like this. They, they, they have a desperate mental problem, which is that they see in the Old Testament a divine unity. And the idea that there could be a trinity or a binary nature to God, um, they find disturbing. And so they have to get back to that absolute unity. But they don't realize that God in Catholic teaching is and always has been an absolute unity. The unity lies at the level of the divine essence. The Father possesses the divine essence fully. The Son possesses the divine essence fully. The Spirit possesses the divine essence fully. So there's no lack of unity that God is one. Personhood is another matter. There, there does not need to be one divine essence and one person. That is not revealed to us. That God is one is revealed to us in Scripture. But if there's actually a, if there's simply a unity of persons, then how could Isaiah chapter nine verse six say that that there's an, another other than the Father who we call Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, the Son who shall be born to us, whom in Mass shall be spoken of at Christmas Day. For unto us a son is given, and his name shall be Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Further, we have in, um, in Genesis, where um, three men come to Abraham, who's beneath the oaks of Mamre, and one of these individuals turns out to be God himself. Two of them are angels, and the angels go off subsequently to Sodom. But before they do, they all eat. They all eat with Abraham. And that's interesting as well. They're not, there's an incarnation that's gone on there, because, you know, if you're actually eating meat, then you're, you're actually possessing a body, unless there's a kind of um, an attempt to deceive Abraham about eating, of which there's no indication in Genesis. Those two individuals go off to Sodom and we find out when they're in Sodom, they are indeed angels of God. The Lord God remains on the earth with Abraham. But when it comes to Sodom's judgments, the New Testament says something very interesting. And it's worth reading directly rather than me just citing it. Chapter 19, verse 24 of Genesis. This is God who's on earth now. Then the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. So we can see there's two lords here. Thus, if you're an honest Jew, and I did mention this to a Jewish person one one day, a couple of years ago, and he was a bit confounded by it. And he said he'd go and, go and look, in, look into it. But if you're an honest Jew, never mind an honest um, Unitarian of, of a kind of Christian flavour, you will see that your own Bible tells you you're not to speak of God solely in these Unitarian terms. Now, I admit that in the days before Christ and before the Catholic Church, it will be confusing to understand what's going on here. But those days of, of obscurity are past and we can see what the, how we can understand God as a divine unity, despite there being two Yahweh's, as I've quoted in here. And it's not the only place we have this issue about God.